Welcome back to Security Weekly's Virtual Hacker Summer Camp. I am Paul Asadorian. In this segment, we'll be talking about threat hunting and incident response with Google Cloud and Tanium. Uh, here with us today, Anton Chuvakin, Head of Solution Strategy for Google Cloud, is with us. Anton, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Matt Hastings, the Senior Director of Product Management at Tanium, is here with us. Matt, welcome. Thank you. So Anton and Matt, we, we saw this, uh, you know, segment that we had coming up. We read some of the announcements and we were like, what's going on? So I thought I'd ask you both, um, you know, mm. kind of a little background on the, the, the product side respectively and then uh, what the integration uh, means. If I can call it an integration and or partnership, I'll let you guys explain. Sure. So do you want to have a like more of an official answer or more like a fun answer? Let's go with fun, always. You're on Security Weekly. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So um, so I'm sometimes credited with coining the term EDR, right? Uh, and uh, it was way back in 2013 when I was at Gartner. So when I thought of EDR, I kind of thought of a sensor on the endpoint that can see a lot of things, uh, ca capture the right information that goes far beyond logs, but also a backend that can be kind of a brain for the sensor. So I thought when my... When I originally thought of EDR vision, I thought of a sensor and a brain. Mm -hmm. So as time progressed, uh, EDR product evolved, and some of them had a great brain and a not-so-great sensor, and some of them had a great sensor and maybe not so much, uh, not so great a brain. So I feel like the chronicle tenium thing is kind of a choice, chance to collect the best sensor with the best brain. Mm. Agreed. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll kind yeah. of stop there. Yeah, no, I, that's a perfect uh, overview. Matt? You want to uh, kind of, you know, weigh in from your, the Tanium perspective, uh, you know, what it means to, to be part of this integration? Yeah, I'll try to keep it in the context of, of sensors and brains. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, Tanium for the longest time has invested pretty heavily in the sensor space. So visibility on the endpoint and providing great flexibility and depth into the endpoint itself. And then partnering, you know, I think you can call it a partnership and an integration with Chronicle to provide that data back to them to then overlay that information with other log services and provide a single brain for decision making makes a lot of sense, not only for us, but also for our customers. Yeah, and uh, Matt, what are some of the, the greatest differentiators on the EDR side for Tanium? Uh, I would say our flexibility. So if you look at any two attacks, they're gonna be different in some respects. And incident responders are gonna need flexibility to respond to those attacks in both real-time and historical context. And so Tanium has always been very much real-time focused, ask a question, get an answer. With the mm -hmm. partnership with Google, that just now extends our historical visibility back you know, up to a year, which is almost unheard of in incident response. Yeah, yeah and Anton, what By the way, as a, as a, fun, as a fun, fun addition to this, by the way, uh, I would say that the re retention length is something that I would probably gush about uh, further in the, in the call. But, but to me, uh, one thing is, is notable is that sometimes what we see is people use uh, Tenium as well as other EDR tools for security, but uh, there would always be all those little tasks on the side, like mm -hmm. I want to make maybe make changes, maybe block something, maybe reconfigure something eventually. And to me, the fact that Tenium is... Probably on the strongest side, I'm remembering my Gartner self comparing mm -hmm. EDRs, in terms of acting on the machine and collecting data that isn't narrowly defined security telemetry. So to me, that's kind of a big advantage as well, is that there is a broader purpose to Tanium and there is more control and action features. And Anton, on the uh, the Google Cloud side with the Chronicle product, what are um, well, what are some of the things that attracted you to, to go there and what are some of their uh, biggest differentiators? So, uh, Chronicle platform um, again. One of the item, one of the items, probably the most uh, critical item that attracted me to the to the to the startup when I left my comfort of my of my ivory tower at Gartner and joined Chronicle was the 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 technology, but also the economic model. Of course, uh, during my first encounter with the Chronicle team. Uh, I was kind of impressed by search speed, but then I realized I'm talking to people from Google. They mm, they can search right. the internet in you know a fraction of a second. So I'm being impressed of them searching logs in a fraction of a second. Yeah. So it's kind of silly. So it's there. However, the economic model, the fact that Chronicle doesn't charge per volume uh, of logs or for the number of log sources or for any traditional metrics for SIM log management, to me, the fact that we can not charge that and offer a flat price per employee has powerful magic because mm. it just means that you don't have to decide, hey, do I collect the HTTP logs? Do I collect this type of EDR telemetry? 
is it worth it in terms of the license burn? There's no such thing for us. Like you, you paid for the tool, you paid a fixed price per employee, and then you have the whatever telemetry you want. You want more, you can have more. You want less, you can have less. You want EDR in addition to firewalls? Sure. You want DNS? That's fine. There's no real, it's not an economic decision. It's a security merit decision. So there's one more thing I like to highlight in terms of chronicle advantages. It's kind of how we cross link and enrich the data. So for example, I've, I've met enough people who's been searching for you know, IP addresses, DNS names, but uh, nobody really ever said something like, if I'm searching for an IP address, I also want the data that resolves to this IP, even though there's no IP in the logs. And it's kind of actually a trivial feature in Chronicle. It's a foundational feature. We automatically enrich everything. So in essence, this does add power to our rule-based detections, to our searching, to pivoting. We sort of cross-link enrich, uh, the internal term is aliasing, but I still think of it as enrichment mm -hmm. of many types of data. So if you click on a firewall event, you can see EDR data right there. So to me, this is really cool. And this is almost like how I dreamed SIM should be in my in my younger years. Mm. Yeah, I have weird dreams, I know. <laughs> uh, Matt, what, what are like the popular queries that people are asking of Tanium? How does that tie into Chronicle? And you know, what's the, the kind of heart and soul of what's my problem and how does this you know, kind of collaboration help solve it? Yeah, so I think it really runs the gamut. As Anton mentioned, you know, Tanium is unique in its breadth on the endpoint. So we have just as many customers using us for EDR as we do customers using us for patching and application deployment. Um, but the data layer is all the same. So we can send all that same information into Chronicle. So we can provide you not only EDR telemetry data, but overlay that with, let's say, vulnerability information, uh, information about sensitive data that may be on, on endpoints, and patch status, um, et cetera. So that starts building a really strong big picture about not only why is this endpoint important to my organization, but what may make it infected, what may be causing you know, a potential compromise. And then one of the things uh, Anton mentioned was the brain power of what Chronicle is bringing. So I think this is kind of the evolution of what he first coined in EDR. This is what now talking about XDR. Uh, and mm -hmm. so now that we've combined multiple log sources, made a decision about what to do, we can then circle back to Tanium to actually enact action on the endpoint to take a remedial step to you know, say remove an attacker, patch a vulnerability, update an application. You know, those are all well within our wheelhouse. Yep. Uh, and admittedly, I mean, as I learned in the past, not every customer would act automatically or would trigger automated actions, but at the same time, the chance is there and the possibility is there to accelerate response from that point of view. Uh, it, I'm a network packet geek, right? And I love NetFlow as well. Mm -hmm. How does that come together between, because I believe memory serves me correctly, mm -hmm. Tanium can also collect some network telemetry from the host side. Obviously, Chronicle can probably pull in, I would imagine, full packet captures and or, or NetFlow. Actually, does, does Zeke, get... uh, level, 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 layer 7 telemetry, not FPCs. I mean, we don't mm -hmm. want the the payloads, but we do have the, uh, through Zeek and through other integrations, we get the uh, layer server captures. To me, they're quite sufficient for most cases, but admittedly not all. Gotcha. And Matt, on the Tanium side, are you collecting any network telemetry connections, uh, you know, from the host? Yeah, so your standard IP connections, your standard DNS requests, HTTP requests. What's nice is when you marry that up with the Chronicle data set, mm. things that might get in the middle of those like proxies or, or firewalls, mm -hmm. you can start seeing a much broader picture. I mean, funny enough, uh, we do see, so I think Zeek, uh, Zeek style from both open source and, uh, and the Core Light commercial mm. uh, data, probably one of the more popular data sources. We see a lot of the data. And of course, marrying that to endpoint is hugely useful. Like uh, in, in all the years, I mean, in, in, well, in, in, in past, I would say this is a hugely useful combination, like detailed telemetry from what's running and what it's doing on the machine tied straight to layer seven connectivity out and in like that. Yeah. That's amazing. No, agreed. I, I love, uh, and there's lots of ways to, you know, skin this cat. Right. But I love, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the network, uh, traffic logs, right. NetFlow or bro or Zeek logs, I should say. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, that host sent that kind of weird. Like, I wonder what the user in the process was. Right. And then you marry those mm -hmm. two together and yes. you get a, a more, a way yeah. more complete picture and can make yeah. decisions better. But here's the thing, it, it, the, the ability to do it was there for many products. I yeah. mean, there's no real, 
uh, it's kind of clear what to do. The point is that for Chronicle, it's kind of done for you by the platform layer. There's no real need to do anything. I mean, that's that's a default feature of the product. And so to me, uh, while I respect the guys who want to search for keywords uh, in raw text search, I still feel like they're kind of wasting a lot of time doing that. Yeah, they know they have, quote unquote, the original data. But to be honest, uh, the, it's, their brains have to work a little bit too hard to kind of connect the dots. And to me, the fact that the Chronicle connects those dots for you, and uh, I mean, admittedly, in a correct manner, does make it hugely useful for many of security operations people. I, I imagine that both pod, uh, the Chronicle platform and Tanium have uh, threat intelligence uh, integrations. H how do those come come together? Do it, does it independent sources? Do you kind of merge them? How does that work? I think it's a little bit of both. So we do a number of data detections directly on the endpoint. One of the nice options is all of those detections or Tanium alerts can be sent directly into Chronicle. Um, on the same on the same side of that coin, we can also send direct raw telemetry data into Chronicle for ingestion into their own threat intelligence platform. Mm -hmm. I'll let Anton speak to that. Um, yes, that's actually I would probably start at exactly the same spot. Is that the uh, if there's a TI source, a threat intel source that uh, Tenu matched, the match is an alert for us, so we'll get that. However, um, for Chronicle, we sort of classify some of the threat intel sources as like detection grade, and some of them are more context grade. So, example mm. is VT virus toil stuff. We're not going to wake people up at 3 a.m. over a VT match, right. but uh, you want to see VT matches in Chronicle. So, if an alert a threat until match from Tenium or uh, some other Tenium telemetry comes in, we would we would link it to our threat intel sources and some of them would result in detections and some of them would result just in enrichment activities. So for example, if I see a hash, hash would get uh, would get linked to VT data, but we're not gonna, again, we're not gonna trigger any alarms of, uh, of VT scores, but you would see them in the UI. So there would be some other TI sources uh, that would serve in that manner. Of course, people keep prodding us and saying, hey, at Google, you probably have some kind of super secret, ultra unique data sources. Um, and we do. Um, mm -hmm. The point is that not all of them are exposed to clients. So some of them are probably too secret even for us at Chronicle. But mm -hmm. um, we have a, a way to process them through through a human side, through uppercase team that we have. So some of the uh, threat and tell sources that are sort of like the, the very top tier of the very top shelf, of the very far corner of the top shelf threat and tell sources, uh, would get exposed through uppercase only. They would not go into a system. Gotcha, gotcha. That's but fair. customers can still, unfortunately, well, unfortunately, or is it the reality? I don't know if it's unfortunate. Uh, then, then we may end up using it as a sort of additional subscription uh, because we are using humans to, to right. do that, the yeah. uppercase team. And I, I'm assuming that the, this integration is probably pretty easy to stand up, right? Like if you have Tanium and you have Chronicle, getting the two to talk to each other is probably pretty pretty straightforward. <laughs> No, the point was that it's actually done already. There is mm. no, I think easy is not good enough. <laughs> it has <laughs> to happen it. before you actually get the, the bundle. Mm. So uh, if, I, if I have both, like, is there a way to, uh, it's, that integration is kind of built in or do I have to go click a button or like, what does it look like? There is one button. I'll, I'll be honest. There, there is one <laughs> button. You do have to select it um, mm -hmm. and that'll tell Tanium to just start sending data to, to Chronicle. Um, but to Anton's point, one of the big advantages here is you want to send as much data as you can because the right. whole idea here is to detect something that was previously unknown. Right. And so when you want to do that, you need as much data as possible at your disposal. And as far as I know, Chronicle is the only slash best uh, company that's doing that. I mean, one year retention for free, well, included with, with fifth price, mm -hmm. is kind of mind-blowing. I mean, I admit that I, when I first saw the team, I just could not see how economics can ever work. But uh, I mean, after I've been with the company, I know that it does. And so to me, the fact that we can have the uh, one year retention for EDR data and not charge for it essentially mm -hmm. is, is incredible, yet it's true. I mean, I know some other EDRs, even the cloud ones, you know, they can certainly build the backend to retain data in the cloud for a long time, but uh, the costs go up, 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 and then they become crazy high, so nobody actually ends up paying them. Uh, I've met people who store EDR data for a week, mm. and then you have to pay extra, a lot of money to store it for a month, and we're like, what? Why would you do that? Like, you're going to get free one-year retention. You wouldn't have to think about it ever. Mm. 
Yeah, no, it's a great motto. Well, Anton and Matt, thank you so much for appearing on Security Weekly. Folks that want to learn more can go to securityweekly.com forward slash Tanium. Thanks again, guys. Thanks, Paul. With that, we'll take a short break. Come back. I think we got one more segment, maybe two, coming up next. Stay tuned. <laughs> 